It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the 49ers and the Eagles. And it's coming up next on Madden NFL 22. Just north of the Delaware Expressway and east of Broad Street, we find ourselves at Lincoln Financial Field in South Philly. Just a short time ago, these Philly fans in full war as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. Pyrotechnics ablaze. They're set to go as their Eagles will match up with the San Francisco 49ers. Brandon Gordon, as always, joined by my good friend Charles Davis. As CD, you look at the Niners in this matchup. It's a relatively balanced offense. The next-gen stats kind of bear that out. What do you think they'll be looking to do in this one? I think it'll be exactly what you just talked about. They'll want to be balanced on offense, which means to them, they'll want everyone involved. See if they can get some one-on-ones in the passing game. Maybe identify some situation where they can swing the ball to the backs in space. Even find some spots where they just want to play some old-fashioned power football. As one of the most successful coaches in the league told us once, the definition of balanced offense, that means you can do what you want when you want to, not necessarily just running it 50% of the time and throwing it the same percentage. The veteran kicker, Robbie Gold, set to get us started. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. Take it in at the three. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Good work, boys. Let's go. Philly's <laughs> offense getting ready, and Jalen Hurts ready to lead them. The second-round pick who started his career at Alabama then finished with an electric senior season at Oklahoma. Tremendous production in college at two different universities, and this is a guy who was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Still much more of a runner than a thrower, but has plenty of arm and is capable of making the big throws downfield. And don't underestimate his ability to think the game. Remember, he's the son of a coach. On first and 10, it's Hurts. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Eric Armstead, the defensive end, will get credited for the sack. Now, the number one mission of any offensive line, you got to protect that quarterback, keep him safe back there. This time, the rush got to him in a hurry. And this came from the interior of the defensive line. And these guys, they're normally anchors of that spot. And they don't often get clear shots at the quarterback. But in this case, he got past the center and the guard in no time and got there to make the play. Another try after the first down sack. Hurts. That swung out wide to Sanders. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it and really gets them amped up as they go forward. From the gun, it's Hurts. Oh, and Hurts is going to be hit and taken down to the ground. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Here's Aaron Sipos out now to punt on fourth down. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. 
So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by the former number three overall pick back in 2021. It's Trey Lance. And this could be a whole lot of fun because if his game plan goes into effect early, we're going to see some shots downfield, aren't we? What did he talk to us about? Stretching the field. Wants to open things up for not just his receivers, but for anything underneath. Well, that was the theme, the front page of the sports section, where the columnists write, possible air raid. So we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the coaches view that, right? What? Who gave away the game plan? <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious that that'll help them win. And yeah, he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Fletcher Cox there for the tackle. Now, that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. On third down, Mitchell, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. Right back to him on first down. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now a play fake. Lance. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Fletcher Cox, the former Mississippi State Bulldog, ringing the cowbell there on the sack. Boy, Charles, that time he took a bad situation and made it worse. Yeah, you're almost putting together a nice little song there, aren't you? Because it's something you'll see from young quarterbacks. They have that tendency to retreat backwards instead of stepping up in the pocket. Now after the sack, Lance and the Niners staring up here at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Looking deep for Jennings. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. So many times we see teams go on the road and want to lean on their running game, but this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. The back deep for Philadelphia, Devontae Smith. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. Miles Sanders, first carry of the game. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got him pinned down deep. And on the first play, they gave up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about to us all the time, about being 
ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. He's got room to run past the 20. Finally taken down at the 32-yard line. Let's go. Don't give him nothing. Now, those are the ones that hurt defensively. You do everything right. Excellent pressure, good coverage downfield, and then he slips out the back door and turns it into a nice game. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. My first thought is surprise, because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Hurts sets up to throw it. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. That is one heck of a catch right there. Got his eye on it the whole way. And able to make the grab one-handed. Very nicely done. And for a nice chunk of yardage, too. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Hurts. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. That catch good for only a couple. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. To throw again on second down. Hurts. That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Goddard. Six yards is the pick up, and that'll lead to a third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. They'll try and run for it with Sanders. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. A much different second drive here, Charles. They go three and out the first time. This time they've been able to sustain something downfield. And that's what often happens. You get the game started. You know, you have to get your footing underneath you. You have to get used to the flow of the game, the speed of the game. And sometimes that first drive is more of a probing drive. It appears they found something here in the second one. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Second and 10. Here's Hurts to throw. Buying time to his left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. It's an eight-yard pickup, and they're going to face a third down. We're scoreless after one. Now second quarter action from Philadelphia, and it's the Eagles in possession as they've got it with a third down coming up.
Throwing his hurts. And he's got his man. It's the tight end, Goddard. And the Eagles are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. They brought in a heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play. But we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one. Wound up hitting him for a first down. From the eight, they've got it first and goal. Back to throw here. Forced out to his left. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Jalen Hurts, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. Not the first time on this drive we saw him take matters into his own hands, and this time he finishes things off with a touchdown run. You're not going to be happy with me, but I think he took matters into his own feet, didn't he? No. Oh. <laughs> Davis from the top rope. <laughs> I like it. Elliott good with a PAT, and that makes the score 7-0. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the capper that put it in the end zone, a run of eight yards. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Throwing now is Lance. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. They'll try the left side. Mitchell and very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. And they faked the handoff. Now Lance. That's complete. It's Brandon Ayuk. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against him a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. On first down, it's Mitchell. 
Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. On second and nine, Lance. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over in that time, but it's going to lead to third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And he will not make it to that imaginary yellow line as they get him to the ground at about the 23. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. The 49ers are going to turn over to the special teams crew. The field goal unit is out there now. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. The kick by Gold is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So the margin shrinks there as they get the field goal to draw them a bit closer here in this second quarter. Yeah, nice snap, nice hole. They just want to keep this game close, so give them credit for finishing that one off with three. Now it's gold after splitting the uprights to kick this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Let's go, baby. Let's go. And out now come the Eagles. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 24. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. It's caught by Sanders. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that'll bring up second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. From the 31, Hurts. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Come on, now. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. On first and 10, it's Sanders. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 49-yard line. They'll set up to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Smith. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. 
But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now back to throw. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. They'll fake the give to Sanders, and now Hurts. Well, this is Smith with a grab. Touchdown, Eagles! Devontae Smith, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. CD for them, this has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Elliott good on the extra point. And that pushes the lead up to 11. A drive that time of six plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Out on the field now, here come the 49ers. They trail now 14-3, an 11-point deficit as they start things out with a first and 10. Lance looking to throw it. That's complete out left to Ayuk. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Second quarter action with 159 remaining. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. On first and ten, here's Lance. Flushed out right. Room to run past midfield. And Lance will have the first down as he's able to slide to avoid the contact there at the end of the play. But Charles, in the past, a lot of people call this offense one-dimensional. I think you did. Well, I think it was you. I'll be honest, I did. <laughs> I think the fan base is hoping with this young rookie that they can put some wrinkles in this offense like we just saw. I think you're exactly right because we did have that discussion that what we've seen in the past from them, they needed to broaden, and they have done it here. Look at what he's bringing to their offense, and now as a defensive coordinator, you've got some extra work to do to prepare for him and their offense. Here's second and ten. To throw, it's Lance. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. 
The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. Now Lance. Open man is Juwan Jennings. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. First and ten here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Meanwhile, Lance's throw pulled in by Kittle. And he is out of bounds right around the ten-yard line. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Niners with their first trip to the red zone thus far. They've got a first and goal from the 10-yard line. Now Lance again. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. Here's Lance. This pass to Jennings and he makes a catch. They get only a yard there. Now it's third and goal. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? That's caught by Debo Samuel. Touchdown, San Francisco. Debo Samuel in the final seconds of the first half. And the 49ers are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. That is a near-perfect end-of-half drive right there. And we've seen that many times from the best in the league. But do you really expect to see it done that well by a rookie? And how about the timing? Finishing it almost near the zeros, as you said, right at the end of the half. Great momentum to carry into the locker room. Gold able to tack on the extra point, and the lead is down to four. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Let's go! Let's go! So time perhaps for one final kneel down before they take this lead to the locker room. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. 
So we've come to halftime here in Philly with the Eagles on top. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though. A look at the next-gen stats for the Niners in that first half. And they weren't able to get a whole lot done throwing the football. That'll likely be a big key if they want to turn things around in the second half. Meanwhile, for the Eagles, they too found some success throwing the football. But I think both teams would say there's room for improvement in the second half. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. The 49ers going to have the football and trailing on the scoreboard as we get back underway on EA Sports. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. And they're on the short end of the scoreboard here. Charles, what adjustments, if any, do you think they need to make for the second half? We're paraphrasing the gold medal hockey winning coach Herb Brooks. I just say you continue to play your game. Throw the ball. They had success doing it in the first half. So make sure you keep getting the ball to your playmakers, a little bit more to the perimeter perhaps. But above all, play your game. Throwing on first down is Lance. Pressure comes, and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Javon Hargrave, his second sack of the night. It seemed like he kept going through those progressions, and I thought he might dump that underneath, but he couldn't get rid of the football in time. And I have to wonder if he was thinking while he was back there, I wish there were a lot less progressions on this play, just someone that I can dump the ball to and get it out of my hands. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Here's Lance to throw it. Under pressure, and they got to him again. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop him for an eight-yard loss. Now that's the way to start the second half. Back-to-back -back sacks. Whatever the halftime speech was, I hope they recorded it. After the sack, they'll come up now, third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. And indeed, that's what they'll do as they run it here. And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. It's a seven-yard run, but it does bring up fourth down. Well, they did go run, so you were right. Maybe a little more breathing room for fourth down. No, no one wants to be accused of playing it safe, right? But instead, they would just reverse it and say, we're playing it smart. Here comes the 49ers punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Eagles will have it, taking over first and 10. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at the 45. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, and Hurts is going to be hit and taken down to the ground. 
Eric Armstead able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. I'm sure a lot of time was spent in the locker room, Charles, with talking with his defense about setting a tone here in the third quarter when you're down on the scoreboard. A sack like that, maybe that can get him going. Yeah, you have to believe exactly what you just said, that they got together and said, let's be some change agents here. Let's go ahead and turn things around. Let's be the force that gets us going here in the second half and puts us in a position to find a way to win the game. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Hurts a handoff to Sanders. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. 49ers have an extra defensive back on the field. A nickel set for third down. Burt sets up to throw it. And this is going to be incomplete. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blanket those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just lop one toward the bench, not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and possession will switch hands first and 10. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game. All right, in baseball, I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. They'll run on first down. It's Mitchell, and he'll work this forward for about three at second down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Right back to Mitchell on second down. Room here to run! And he's brought down after a very nice game. On, 47 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. From midfield, here's Lance. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and that'll make it second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. Lance now to throw. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. going to throw and that is incomplete a lot of times it's that first read that you have maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target but he was covered quite well and that one's incomplete here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on here to punt it away He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. 
Philadelphia's offense ready to give us another look. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 21. He'll start with a handoff to Sanders. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Second down and eight. Another run here with Sanders. And some room to maneuver. And he finally is out of bounds, but he's down inside the 20-yard line. A big play there for Philly. So that run there, yeah, I don't know if it's overstating things to call it a thing of beauty, but in terms of football plays, that's as good as you're going to see. And what I really enjoyed about that run and what made it so impressive to me was how he improvised along the way. Sometimes on a big play, you just get the football and you take off in a straight line and go. But this time, how about the artistry of that play? That looked a little bit like a Picasso to me. On first down, it's Sanders. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Throwing on second and three. Hurts. And it's caught. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense could get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. They'll try to run with Sanders. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. Extra bulk up front for second and inches. Three tight ends. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sack back Stop at the nine-yard line. <laughs> Good Credit job. the sack to Fred Warner. So that time, Charles, a quarterback helpless, really, in the pocket in the face of a pass rush like that. They were on him instantly. Yeah, and this time it's going to come from the middle linebacker because watching the linemen, it seemed to me that they thought he was going to drop back into pass protection, but he surprised them and came on the blitz instead and had a pretty clear run to the quarterback. They'll look to throw on third and goal. And he's going to lose yardage here. As they will switch ends as time has run out on this third quarter of play. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. The kick by Elliott is good. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. Oh. 
After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. And it'll come out to the 25 on, as he will Let's not go. attempt to return. The San Francisco's offense returns to the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. A little jet sweep to start the drive. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That's a wide out. When you take that handoff and you come around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. And he'll give it here to his running back. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding him with no gain. Throwing his lance on third down. Over the middle to Kittle, complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Throwing now is Lance. The same target, same result. It's Kittle. A gain of six there on first. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And very little daylight there. They'll get a couple up to the 44. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The Niners on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. Here it's third and three. Now a give right side. Mitchell, that is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw it for a loss. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Eagles will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and ten. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. 
Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. From the 22, Hurts. Open man has got it, the tight end. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. They'll run on first down. It's Sanders, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Throwing from the gun. It's Hurts. They'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 39. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Hurts. Throw left side complete. That's Sanders. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. They go back to the ground with Sanders. And he'll go down at the 28. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around a training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around <laughs> campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. Right back to Sanders on first down. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Here's Hurts to throw. Going for it all. And is it a touchdown? No signal. No, they say incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. The kick by Elliott is good. And they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. So that one, CD, going to make the road back a lot more difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know they were praying on the other sideline for a miss because now 
as you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores. You don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your way. You've got to score, somehow get the ball back, and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. And in the early going, the running game, as we see the numbers, it just wasn't on point. Well, now it's gotten more true to form. And sometimes it takes a little while for an offensive line to get in sync because early in the game, defenses throw different patterns at you, different formations, different sets, and you might not block them quite the way you want to. But as you start to get into a groove and you figure out what they're doing, now it all comes together, and that's what we're seeing right now. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. A good gain on first, has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. From the gun, it's Lance. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. Well, they've certainly had trouble unlocking this defense through three and a half quarters. So I don't expect it to get any easier now. You know they're going to be sitting back and waiting on everything. And they force an incompletion there. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Looking to throw. Lance, now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's caught inside the 35. A big play that time through the air. 34 yards. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. They'll look to throw again. That's Samuel caught left side. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Three yards the game there, second down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get up field with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. Now the question is obvious. Do you try to kick the field goal right here knowing that you need two scores? I would be thinking about if I were on that sideline. Get the field goal now, try and get the touchdown later. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. Again, it's Lance. And it's caught by Jennings. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Of course, remember, you need a touchdown here and a field goal. It doesn't matter the order, but they have to get it done and get it done fast. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. 
probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed. And in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds. And obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. touchdown originally and this will stay a touchdown after the video review so they had it right gold to add the extra point it's up and good and the lead's now down to three at 20 to 17 so that drive goes eight plays and it's polished off by a touchdown for san francisco So still a chance with just over 20 seconds to go, but they need to get this one back, no doubt. And the Eagles are going to recover. And that might be enough to put a bow on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here i just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game i'm still waiting to see that number is empirical The Eagles in the victory formation as they take an E. And now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. down to one knee and that should just about do it listen anytime you take a knee to end a game that means you've won it so it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd isn't there <laughs> and the home crowd applauding they're happy with what they've seen chalk this one up in the left hand column for a win yeah that's right head to the locker room throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids your gloves your towels get to share it with the home team so it's a victory here for the Philadelphia Eagles. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offenses spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, Tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn.